I'm here with Sinan Kanatsis. Did I say that properly? Oh, you did. Perfect. Uh, Vince Vitale, Editor-in-Chief of Youngry. First thing I want to jump into is this is an awesome party here at CES. Is this the actual hangover? You know, they room? said the hangover suite. The hangover suite. But when I walked in, I realized it was the ha the Rain Man suite. Yeah. So, a uh, little well, bit off. What's better? Yeah, it, I would say Rain Man just because that movie was so iconic. Hangover was pretty good too. I mean, I think that's the balcony that they threw him over with the bed and all that. But We're going to do a zoom in of that later. Okay, great. Um, First question is, how did you put this all together? What's it like throwing a really cool party in Vegas? You know, when you look at like bringing people together, it's all about relationships. So everyone here, we've got media, bloggers, people from the tech industry all coming together. And a lot of times when you're at a show like CES where there's hundreds of thousands of people, you got sharp elbows bumping into you, the booths are so busy. It's really hard to make human connections. And we really strive to create experiences where people can come together where there's food and drinks and music and nice ambiance. And that is where the human experience actually connects and evolves. And we find that a lot of business misses that sometimes. And I feel that between the IMA and the work that I do at KCOM, we do that very well. Uh, tonight, we're really uh, proud of our client, uh, Connected Yard, who's got an incredible device uh, that's transforming <laughs> pools and spas uh, across America. And that's kind of like the, the polish on the party, right? Because that brings purpose to why people come together. Uh, you meet a founder who's raised millions of dollars, who's got the success story. Uh, you've got a technology that's disrupting an industry the same way Uber's done for taxis. And we find that when you bring all those elements together, uh, it really creates an experience. When people go to Vegas, they think about CES and the three days they spent there. They remember our party. That, that's that's where we kind of strive to do. So I love that. Yeah. You mentioned KCOM and IMA. Yep. I, I consider you the godfather of Orange County entrepreneurship. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, if you were to start a business anywhere else, since you've already conquered Orange County, where would you start it today? You know, I, I don't really know if it's so much region, and I go back to relationships again. I, I really think it's who you know. And that could be in Utah, that could be in Canada, that could be in Turkey. I really don't think the region really benefits an entrepreneurial spirit. If you have the right relationships in place, you can make anything possible. Um, where I see upgrowth in economy are regions like Utah. I think Utah has great potential because of its current tax rate, its entrepreneurial sort of uh, upswing that's happening in tech. Uh, but again, I, I keep going back to relationships. If you have those right sort of connection points, uh, it's going to help any business idea you have or any solution you're trying to bring to market become a reality. John, so we're here at CES. Um, I want to ask you, what are the industries and the trends that you see that are going to really take realm in 2017? What do you see as the forefront and what's trending upward? Well, I know, Vincent, you were here in CES as well, walking the floors. What we're starting to see is a transformation of automotive and technology becoming one on one. Mm -hmm. I feel like the SEMA show and technology are almost becoming uh, a baby, like, you know, they're, they're, they're you know, together. Um, you're seeing so much advancement in automotive technology and, and it is so present here. You're also seeing so much use of data and the way that you're able to use data to predict what's going to happen tomorrow. Healthcare is a great example. I know you interviewed Dr. Oz uh, who is studying the way that data is impacting healthcare. So you're looking at different markets on how uh, a, a healthcare industry is transforming in Nigeria versus the United States uh, based on data that the hospitals and healthcare organizations are, are connecting. So you're seeing a lot of that. You just interviewed Mark Jaynes of Finn. Uh, you're seeing the IoT, the Internet of Things, whether it's Samsung or Panasonic. You're seeing it in the home, in the backyard, in this whole connected tissue of technology uh, that's happening here at the Consumer Electronics Show. So where it was drones maybe two or three years yep. ago, that was that cool, sexy thing. Yep. Now we're starting to see big data as a predictive analytics tool to really see where the future is going in, in technology. Uh, we're seeing you know, uh, connected environments of the Internet of Things like Finn and the smart home technologies. And, and we kind of see automotive playing a big role in the future of CES because uh, everyone drives a car. And now with this whole autonomous uh, technology that's actually driving the car for us, it's really a trip, you know. It's those things that you used to once say, like, oh, a car will drive me to the airport. Um, it was once a, an idea that is now becoming a reality. 
And I think the when the pie hit my face today is when I walked through Panasonic and I was getting a one-on-one -on -one demo with their uh, executive in, in, mar in marketing. Uh, and she was showing me how the refrigerator who actually ordered the produce from Amazon Fresh. And then I started thinking about how Jeff Bezos is talking about drone technology driving that product to your home. So if you're out of cheese or a tomato, your refrigerator can actually deliver it to you in the moment you need it. And that's where the whole world is moving with technology. And CES is the quintessential show that's happening all around the world here in Las Vegas that's displaying that. So we're really seeing the future here uh, in real time. So those are my thoughts there. I feel like you encapsulated that perfectly. Um, but you mentioned both the automobile industry moving forward and technology inter intersecting with the automobile industry. And immediately I thought, Tesla. Yeah. What are your views on Tesla? And shout out to Justin Klein out there. Well, you know, <laughs> being a proud owner of a Model X, uh, Elon, who's a, a great friend, we brought him to Orange County a few years ago. Tesla is very much the apple of automotive. You know, they're not just a disruptor. They thought about the psychological experience of driving a car, of transportation. It wasn't just uh, being electric. It was the way the steering wheel felt in your fingers. It was the way that Christmas is here and they send you a holiday message in your, in your upgrade where you hold the, the, the Tesla icon for five seconds and you type in Model Xmas. And then it plays this Christmas light show for you. Our Falcon doors open up. Our children are laughing. And I'm seeing this experience and I'm thinking, this is changing my life. This is changing their lives. What car company in the world does that? And there are skeptics out there that feel that Tesla may not have financial longevity. Um, but I really look at leadership and it goes back to relationships again. I know Elon personally. When you have a young, vibrant, strong leader, anything is possible. And if you look at Tesla Auto, the same way Finn and Connected Yard is disrupting a marketplace, the impossible really is possible. And I think the best is yet to come. And I bought a first generation Model X. And I would have thought that this product has been in the market for a hundred years. It's that good. It's that perfect. Nothing has screwed up in that car. Um, and I'm a passionate believer in the brand and the technology. And it's not just because I know Elon. It's because I know that this product is going to transform the entire market. It's so successful that Tesla doesn't have a shred of footprint at CES because they don't need to. I love it. So that's my thought. Final question. One bit of advice that you would give to any entrepreneur that's listening right now. What is that one piece, that one nugget that you want to leave this audience with? Take risks. There's not enough risk taking in entrepreneurship and it, it somewhat makes me sad. Um, I know that when I built my two companies that I had to take a lot of risks. But risks come with responsibility. You can't take risks knowing that you're breaking the law or you're cheating or you're lying or you're stealing. But you can take risks of being bold and saying things and pushing things and, and social media is a great way to actually express the way you feel. Um, you have to edit your own language, of course, because we all have those thoughts that we want to put on social media, but you have to manage risk with responsibility. And I feel that a lot of entrepreneurs are so conservative on taking chances, on risking it all for that next step, but for every risk comes a reward. It's either a learning lesson or you're going to climb up the ladder three steps. And I've seen it happen firsthand with, with myself um, in every part of life. It's not just business, it's also personal risk too. Uh, if you want to get married or have children, you have to take a risk, right? I mean, <laughs> right. It, it's just how it is. Yep. You just got engaged, right? Yep, yep, it's a risk. Yep, it's a risk. <laughs> okay? And I really believe that in, in life, risk is the best asset that we all have. Uh, if you look at entrepreneurs like Elon and Mark Zuckerberg and you know these iconic individuals of our generation, but there's a whole bunch of stories like Elon and Mark that we haven't heard of. And these entrepreneurs are taking risks every day. There are people here at CES exhibiting with their life savings and 
you know, they're leveraging family money and they're leveraging credit and they're using lines of credit to just get a small little exhibit in a tiny little part of this huge convention center. And for them, it's that moment of truth. It's that moment of trying everything and risking it all to just try and go three steps forward. And that's the one thing I would give to entrepreneurs is, is invest into risk, uh, but also relationships too, which is how we started this conversation. If you really take the time, I know when you and I met, we met for coffee. Uh, we had a great half an hour together, and I felt like that relationship has evolved in so many different ways, and I know forever we'll help each other, whether it's in business, personal, and that's the human experience. We get one shot at this. So those would be like my, my one big thing is risk, the other one is relationships. And don't always look for something in return. When you wanted to meet with me, I wasn't looking for what am I going to get out of this. I wanted to help you. And I know that now you're interviewing me. So there's things that like come back. It's like a boomerang effect. Throw a lot of boomerangs out there, and I guarantee you one or two really good ones are going to come back at you in the head and, and help you grow. So I'm coming for it. Right on, man. Great. All right, thank well, you great for your interview. time. Yeah, Loved continue it. success to you too, man. Thank you. Thanks.